time, and then we'll go and uh, be on our way for the rest of the week, all right? Hey, uh, it's been a great week working with you guys. Uh, first of all, I commend you for being at a basketball camp, uh, taking, all, taking all the basketball part in, but also taking in what we learned this week uh, through our four days that we just recapped downstairs. Today, I'm going to talk about more than basketball. I'm going to talk about character, leadership, and athletics. I am the commissioner of the Great Plains Athletic Conference. That is the conference that Morningside College is in, Briar Clifton, North, Northwestern, uh, all, all the schools basically around the three-state area here, in the NAIA, which is the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, based out of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, the NAIA is one of the oldest, is the oldest athletic organization in the country. It did precede the NCAA. And what we do in the NAIA is we really focus on character-driven athletics. What does that mean? Character-driven athletics. Yes, we want to win. We want to have championships. We obviously compete. There's more than 60,000 student athletes that compete in the NAIA, and everybody wants to hold up a red banner at the end of the year that says national champion. But we really emphasize character-driven athletics. We do that through five core character values in the NAIA. We call our champions a character program. It's a big fancy word, but they're really five traits that I think you can take with you uh, as, as young people, as you start to work through middle school and into high school and, and on into your life. So let's simply start with, what is character by definition? The mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. It's who you are. It's who you are. Number two, the distinctive nature of something. It's what something is. Does something have it? Character. The third one is the most interesting definition by the dictionary. The quality of being individual, typically in an interesting and unusual way. I like those last words, in an interesting and unusual way. Right back when the dictionary was written, it almost basically said character is kind of unusual. We don't see it every day. We have to work at it. Three stories about character of pictures there on the screen. We'll start on the left. That is out of the state of Montana. It was the second meeting of the year between Butte Central and Aconda High School, and also uh, a school by the name of Butte Central. Rivals, rivals. The young lady you see there is Kiernan Gallagher. She slipped to the floor and she sprained her ankle. She knew, the, the, the other player knew she was not gonna be able to get up and get off the floor. So instincts took over. She simply picked her up, carried her to the bench, to the trainer, so she could get attention. That shows character. The one in the middle you may have heard about is a pretty popular story about five, six years ago, and it has to do with uh, Central Washington University and Western Oregon in a softball game. Mallory Holtman was a player, gained national attention for Central Washington when she assisted an opposing player in scoring a home run. Sarah Tukulski is the young lady in red. She hit a home run, but she got hurt. Fell down. She could not move. She had the home run, but by the rule book, she had to touch all the bases for that home run to count. Now, the umpires actually got it wrong. The umpire said she had to touch all the bases. That actually ended up in an interpretation being wrong. She could have had somebody come in and do it for her. So the other players from Central, they took over. Said, well, um, Mr. Umpire, why, what if we carry her around the bases so she can touch each individual base and that home run could be scored. And they said that would be fine. They did that. It gained national attention. It won an SP on ESPN for true character in athletics. That's the middle picture. The one on the other side is an NAI story from last fall in Lawrence, Kansas at the National Cross Country Championship. The runner is from Wayland Baptist, uh, the one on the left. He fell just a few yards short of the finish line, cramped up couldn't finish the race. On came Mount Mercy's Tyler Hartley. Uh, Mount Mercy's here in Iowa, other side of the state. And he could have ran by him. He could have said, tough luck, buddy. Better luck next time, right? No. His instincts took over. He bent down. He put him around his shoulder. There's actually part of the picture you don't see. There was also another runner from Emory Riddle, Adrian Castillo, that came along and they both helped him across the finish line. And when they were asked afterwards, why'd you do that? Why in the world would you forfeit your time and placement in the national cross-country meet for that young man? He said, because that person deserved to finish the race. That's character. 
There are five character values that I want to talk to you about today. We'll put them up on the board, write them down in your thing. There's only four spots, add a fifth if you would, and we'll go through those. Number one, character is integrity. Character is integrity. Simply put, knowing and doing what is right. If you look at the stick figure there, there's one person. It's you. You and only you. Knowing and doing what is right. Tony Dungy, football coach, right? Some of you know, actually works on uh, Football Night in America, NBC, Sunday nights now. Integrity, the choice between what's convenient and what's right. Isn't that really true? We like to do what's convenient, don't we? The easy way out. Integrity is doing what's right. That's our first character trait, is integrity. The second character trait, write it down, is character is respect. Now we've got two people up there, you and someone else. How do you treat that person? Treat others the way you want to be treated. It's a two-way street. If I want Kyle to respect me, I better respect Kyle. If I want Ryan to respect me, I better respect Ryan. It's a two-way street. It's the golden rule. Coach Barry talked about it earlier in the week. Do unto others as you would want done unto you. Magic Johnson had a statement. Ask not what your teammates can do for you. Ask what you can do for your teammates. That's actually a spin on a very well-known quote by a president. Does anybody know? We're going back in time. Yep. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. What did he say? Ask not what you can do for your country. country. Right. Ask what your country can do for you. It's the exact same concept in athletics. Magic Johnson played a long career. Michigan State, Los Angeles Lakers. And ask not what your teammates can do for you, but ask what you can do for your teammates. Respect. Respect your teammates. We talked about teamwork on Tuesday. That's what respect is about. The third character trait I want to bring to you today is that of responsibility. Embrace opportunities to contribute. Now we've got five people up on the board, right? How do those five people work together? This particular week, that's basketball, right? Five players on the court. When we scrimmage at the end of basketball camp, we have five people trying to work together. Embrace opportunities to contribute. Quick story. For those of you that were in camp last year, you'll know this story. When I was in high school, my senior year, there was three high school seniors in my class that played all four years of high school basketball. Me, my friend Brent, and my friend Mark. That was it. When we started as freshmen, there was 14, 15 of us on the freshman team. We won one game. We were terrible. Okay? Three of us stuck through to our senior year to play varsity basketball. The junior class underneath us was loaded. Absolutely loaded. Multiple talented players. Multiple scoring leaders. Multiple assist leaders. They had it all. We started out our year. We had a couple of upsets. We came pretty quickly noticed that this is a team that could be pretty good as juniors. And a senior group were kind of on the sidelines looking in. I was one of those players that by halfway through the season was pretty much put to the bench. Went home, had my uniform in hand, said to my mom, I'm done. I'm done. I'm quitting this. This is crazy. I put in four years. I've stuck with this. Had 14 kids when we started as freshmen, three of us are left. Why the world can't three seniors all play? Right? My mom said one quick statement to me. It's short to the point. Are you sure that's really what you want to do? That's it. Are you sure that's really what you want to do? I did not quit that day. Fast forward the story. The next year, that group of juniors, the coach was right. That group was pretty good. They went on, I think they only lost three games that year, and they won the state championship in the state of Iowa the very following year. My freshman year of college, their senior year in high school. That's not really the end of the story. The very next year, or a few years down the road, I go to Door College to work full time. It's 1997, I graduated in 97. We had opened a new recreation center, and lo and behold, who comes over as our recreation center director? My high school basketball coach. Now, we're colleagues. We're working together. The same guy I wanted to quit on in high school is now a coworker of mine. We've actually developed a very good relationship and friendship throughout the years, even though there's a fair amount of years difference between us. I could have given up on the guy. Think about that down the road, how that would have played out had I not respected that individual and his decisions to do what was best for the basketball team. Chris Paul, we know Chris Paul, right? 
For me, it's all about who you are. Some athletes may feel a responsibility, some may not. We don't always feel responsibility. But one thing I've talked to my family and team about is doing more, trying to make an impact. Character is responsibility. Next one, we're on number four. Character is sportsmanship. We've talked sportsmanship. We've seen a lot of good sportsmanship this week here at camp. It's been awesome. Absolutely awesome. High five, great job. We've been preaching it, but you've been doing it more importantly. That is uh, Jim Courier, a former professional tennis player. First of all, the stick figures. What do we got? Three on one side, three on the other. We've got a competition, right? We've got a competition. We've got team gray and team red. So now we're, we're against each other. We're in competition, sportsmanship. For me, it is when, when a guy walks off the court and you can really tell, you cannot tell whether he won or lost, it's how he carries himself with pride. I'll read it again. For me, sportsmanship is when a guy walks off the court and you really can't tell whether he won or lost when he carries himself with pride either way. Guys, I'm going to quote Lou Holtz. I may not know all the answers, but you've never been 40, and I've been 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 years old. Okay? You've never been my age. I've seen a lot. Sportsmanship is hard. Guys, ladies, it's hard. We are competitive by nature. We want to beat people. We want to win. But you know what? Bring your best to the competition by showing sportsmanship, and like he said at the end there, how you carry yourself. Are you going to put your head down? Are you going to go, oh, man. Are you going to go mope in the corner? Chris Kingsbury hit on it yesterday, didn't he? He talked about how mental toughness, you know what? Better get back up and go after it. The next play, next play. Mike Krzyzewski coined the next play phrase. Next play. Very important. Final fifth character attribute, uh, character attribute I want to talk to you about is that of leadership. And that's really what we've been talking about all week. It's the Leadership Basketball Academy. Now we've got all the people working together in the top. Bringing your best to all of your competition. Or bringing your best to your classroom. Bringing your best to your friends in the schoolyard. Bringing your best to the friends in the neighborhood. You fill in the blank. Coach Barry, I thought, said it very well. Say thank you. Say thank you to the lady at McDonald's who made your sandwich. That's servant leadership. Jackie Robinson. I don't think anybody has gone through more in life, did go through more in life, than that of Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson, first black baseball player to break through the barrier and play in the major leagues. Anybody seen the movie 42? Pretty new movie. Got spit on, got called names, got told there's no way, got told get out of here. This, this, this field's not for you, this field's for everybody else but you. Jackie Robinson said, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. Jackie Robinson to this day, the number 42, is the only number in Major League Baseball that is retired in every baseball park. You, you go to any major baseball park, you go to the Twins, Royals, Cubs, does not matter where you go. There will be a 42 on the fence. No Major League Baseball player wears the number 42 out of respect to Jackie Robinson and what he did. He was a servant leader. One day a year, Major League Baseball, everybody wears the number 42 out of respect to Jackie Robinson. He had servant leadership. Those are the five I want you to write down. Stick with me here for the last couple moments. I just want to talk about leadership to wrap up camp as far as this part of camp goes this week. What is leadership by definition? The action of leading a group of people or an organization with different styles of leadership to the state or position of being a leader. On the left, the word leader. Um, six words there that I think really can define what a leader is. A leader is number one intelligent. Think about that a little bit. You've got to be kind of intelligent to be a leader, right? Number two, you've got to be honest. Don't ever lose your honesty. Honesty is the best policy. We've heard it since we were kids, right? Honesty is the best policy. Number three, creative. Being a leader is being creative. Think outside the box. Come up with solutions to problems that you don't even know exist. Be special about what you do. Fourth, confident. You better have some confidence if you're going to be a leader. Because if you don't have confidence, people aren't probably going to be following you as a leader. Fifthly, you better be driven. Kingsbury talked about it yesterday. He talked about how you have to have mental toughness. You better be driven in what you do. It's not about taking shots, it's about making shots, right? Final one, courageous. Jackie Robinson's probably our best example. The guy could have said, forget this. I'm not doing Major League Baseball. I'm not going to be the guy to break the color barrier. He said no. He persevered, mentally went through it, 
and became what we know Jackie Robinson to be today. On the other side there, interesting stat. 80% of corporate CEOs, chief executive officers, the leaders of companies, that's why there's more than basketball. Basketball at this time in your life is a sport you play. It is great. But down the road, you may be doing what I do, commissioner. You may become a coach, like many of our coaches in the back. You may become a teacher. What you learn in sports is going to affect you as a leader later in life. The adversity that I went through in sports in high school has made me a better person today. That's leadership. 80% of our leaders in our country today have had a background in playing sports. Kevin Durant, who saw the movie Thunderstruck. Most of you. They made fun of the quote in the movie, but it really is a pretty good quote. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. If you don't work hard, kids, forget it. There's no shortcuts in life. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That was not just made up for a movie, okay? That is real. Kevin Durant believes it, many other players believe it as well. Let's go off a little bit of what was said about uh, Michael Jordan. We knew the 26 times he missed the game winner. How about the more, more? Above that, he missed more than 9,000 shots in his career. 9,000 shots. He missed them. He lost almost 300 games. 26 times he was trusted to take the game when he shot and he missed it. He failed over and over and over again. But yet, that is why I succeed. That's why Michael Jordan said that. Abraham Lincoln, same way. I believe Abraham Lincoln ran for president three times. Did not win. It was the fourth time that he won. And now Abraham Lincoln is known as one of the most prominent presidents in our history because of what he did to abolish slavery which has become a very big part of the news this past week, right? You've been following the news? All that stuff that happened back then still applies today. Don't forget what you learn now, later in life. I'm not going to go through the whole John Wooden pyramid on success. I want to hit on two quick things. John Wooden, coached at UCLA, uh, does not have a 1,000 wins. He's not a Mike Krzyzewski. Uh, he is not uh, among those, that group, but he did have like 900 and some wins. He had a lot of wins. More importantly, he had 10 national championships at UCLA. But above all that, freight, John Wooden believed that you could not have competitive greatness, the top pyramid block. You could not have competitive greatness without having a strong base underneath you all the way down what he called his pyramid of success. He did not make it a ladder of success. He did not think that one goes to two, forget about one, three goes, forget about two. No, you have to have a pyramid. I got my master's degree this past three years. I wrote a 30, 35 page paper on strictly the pyramid of success. There's thousands of books out there on John Wood. When you get a little bit older, read some of them. Some of them actually are really good for you now, okay? John Wood won a lot of basketball games, but he did it the right way. He built a pyramid of success. But the, he, if you read his books, all that stuff is phenomenal. Poise, confidence, conditioning, skill, teamwork, self-control, all that's great. If you do not have bottom left and bottom right block, forget it, the whole thing crumbles. Bottom left, industriousness, you've got to work hard. And whatever you do, you've got to work hard. If you don't work hard, block falls off, pyramid crumbles. Other side, enthusiasm. You better like what you're doing and get after it, pin your ears back. Because if you don't have enthusiasm, enthusiasm block falls off, the whole pyramid crumbles. Look up the pyramid of success, go through it on your own time. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It still applies today in anything you can do. John Wooden's pyramid of success. Here's John Wooden again. He passed away just a few years ago. He's 99 years old. But he has some great quotes. He's probably one of the most quotable coaches out there. Right, guys? Probably one of the most quotable coaches. They're all pretty darn good quotes. Be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are. Well, your reputation is merely what others think of you. Let that sink in a little bit. Your character is who you are. Okay? Coach Wooden said that. I like this one. Last year, if you were at Pivot Hoops camp, we put it on the back of our shirt, right? I'm wearing one today. What you are as a person is far more important than what you are as a basketball player. Frankly, guys, I could care less if you made a basket all week at camp. Is it great to see you get better? Absolutely. But I don't really care about X's and O's, making baskets or not. But if you walk out of here with your head held low that you've been a disappointment to yourself, then you missed the mark this week. Okay? 
It's about leadership. It's about being confident. It's about gaining character. What you are as a person is far more important than what you are as a basketball player. We don't know who said this quote, but it's a pretty powerful one. Basketball does not build character, but it does reveal it. Basketball isn't going to build it. It might build it a little bit, because we go through a lot of things that we talked about, but it sure does reveal our character. People are watching you. You don't think people watch professional athletes out there today? One professional athlete does one thing wrong, maybe it's in an elevator to a spouse. We hear about it on ESPN, Sports Center. People are watching. Do the right thing. It goes back to day one. Do the right thing. It doesn't build character, but it sure does reveal it. That's been our week. In closing, I close with uh, something I heard this morning. A young girl looked, uh, looked at her Siri on her iPad and asked Siri a question. It said, Siri, am I ugly? Siri responded, no, you're not ugly. You're beautiful. I look at you every day through your uh, camera on the <laughs> iPad. <laughs> It's creepy. But you know what? Every day people see who you are. And it shows whoever's around you. I've always been told don't worry about what people say behind your back, but don't give them something to talk about behind your back. Okay? I leave you with that. Integrity, respect, responsibility, sports specific servant leadership, five character traits that I think will serve you well. Hey, let's have a great final day of camp. Thanks for your time today, guys. Thank you.